Hey everybody, today I'm talking about In the Year of the Dragon by Stefan Feld. Now, if you hear the name Stefan Feld, you probably instantly have your own kind of um, thoughts on it. You either love his games or you hate his games. Um, Stefan Feld is kind of known for his point salad games where you get points for doing pretty much everything. He does Euro style games with usually decent strategy in them. Um, and I personally really enjoy his games. This one um, is... Uh, has a very different feel to the rest of his games because um, it doesn't have that point salad feel to it. Um, in fact, it has a, an almost a, a feel to it that's very different to any game I've ever played before because you don't just play this game, you actually have to try and survive it. It is extremely punishing game. Um, it bombards you with these different events that you have to try and come out the back of um, in as kind of intact as you can and try to squeeze every point out of the game as possible. Um, the game is, uh, it takes about an hour and a half to play, uh, two to five players, and the way it kind of flows is pretty simple because what you do on your turn is you allocate one of your, or your worker, your single worker, onto um, a group of action tiles. And the group of action tiles varies depending on the player count. Uh, for example, there are, there are seven tiles in total, but in a two player game, they'll be split into a group of three and a group of four. And then you put your, your, said your worker on one of those tiles and use one of those actions. And this action can do a number of different things, such as give you money, or they'll let you build your pagodas or your temples and which can increase your storage capacity. They can give you initiative points, which is extremely important in this game um, as you're trying to go around this unique track to make sure you get first dibs on future turns. Um, you can get medicine or you can get food, um, all of which are needed to um, survive these different events that are gonna be coming every round. So there are 12 rounds in the game and uh, each of those rounds is gonna hit you with a different event or at least two of, um, I think there's two types of each event and they are randomly kind of juggled up or jumbled up and put in order. Um, and then you can, you can visually see everything that's gonna to happen to you throughout the game and you have to kind of plan your resources and your different um, help which you're gonna recruit um, in the best possible manner in order to survive those events. Um, so as I said, yeah, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your worker on the board, take the reward. The second thing you're gonna do is you're going to play a card from your, um, from your hand of cards, um, which dictates which new workers you can take into your temples. And those workers are gonna be uh, very important because they boost the power of the actions you take in the first phase. Um, so say for example, you had um, uh, maybe a food worker and those food workers give you two food and the tile give you one food. Um, if you didn't have that food worker, you'd only get the one food from the tile, but if you put if you placed it on the tile and you also had one of those food workers, you'd get say three food per turn. So you've got to carefully um, you know, use your actions in conjunction with your, the workers you have available to you, um, which is a cool touch. And also the workers have varying strengths because you have young workers and you have the more experienced ones. The more experienced ones give you uh, more powerful bonuses, but they have a lower initiative on them. So when you recruit them, um, you're not gonna move as far on the recruitment track and if you take the weaker ones, you're gonna move a lot faster, meaning that you're gonna probably stay um, in front of initiative order um, for longer, which means you're gonna get first dibs on the tiles you want. Now, just because you go somewhere first doesn't mean that someone isn't going to be able to jump on with you. They can, they can do whatever they want, but if they jump on the same group of tiles as you, they're gonna to have to pay a fine of three money. And money in this game is extremely tight, um, not only because you need them to go into the tiles you want, but because um, some of the events require you to pay money. And um, so you've got to know when to have money in your hand because if you don't have money in your hand, when those, um, when those taxes come through, then you're going to have to lose um, more kind of helpers from your temples. So that's kind of going to be the, the kind of theme of the game is you're going to constantly get bombarded with these different events to try and not lose workers because you're going to need those workers to combat future events. And, um, and that's going to be how, how the game flows. Um, Points wise, you're gonna score points for um, the number of different temples you have, um, which is important because why wouldn't you just say, oh, let's have as many temples as I possibly can. You don't wanna have as many temples as you possibly can because when it comes to a feeding round, you're gonna to need to pay food for each temple you have. And that can be absolutely impossible if you have um, a ton of temples. Um, furthermore, if you don't have um, anybody in those temples, then they're going to just um, crumble and um, they're gonna collapse and you're gonna just waste your time. Um, so that's a really cool touch. Temples can be three levels high, um, so you can put three, three workers in each. 
And there are further kind of multipliers you can have at the end of the game by putting Buddhas in those temples, which um, kind of multiply the Buddhas to the number of um, number of floors on your temples. Um, this might sound like there's a lot going on, but there is it's actually the flow of the game is relatively simple and the there's there's nothing really that hits you out of nowhere from this game. You can I think it just the strategy in this game is so embedded in the way it works, you, you are forced to think strategically. Um, because you are, as I said, you, you know which events are coming, you know the resources you have available to you, you know what you can get. And you've just got to try and, um, you know, ride the storm as best as you can, try and get as far as you can on that kind of order of events um, so that you can use any spell opportunity you can to squeeze a point or two out of, um, so you can jump ahead of your opponents. Um, you have different um, workers that give you like books, for example, and then if you use the book action, you can get points for each book you have. Um, but the negative of that is that the books don't contribute anything to the event. So, um, yeah, there's there's so much to think about, so much um, you know contrasting directions where the game is pulling you in, and I said it's, it mainly is a game of kind of da damage limitation, um, and I just love that feel of the game. You know, when it gets to the end, you feel like oh, I've actually you know I've really worked for that victory. Um, you know, I've weathered the storm better than my opponent has, um, and yeah, it just has a, a really cool. Um, tension throughout the game where the game is just bombarding you with stuff. Now some people are going to really love that and a lot of people are going to hate that. Um, you know, People don't want to play a lot of these games in order to get punished um, but I, I just think that it works so well and it is done in such an enjoyable way. Um, so yeah, the, the kind of the mechanism of the game and the feel of the game just I, I really do enjoy and I just love the uniqueness of it. Um, decision wise fantastic again you just just you got to know uh, or plan to as meticulously as possible know when to play your worker cards to get the which ones that you want know when to ditch the ones off that are no longer useful for you um, know when you can take those point hits or know when you can't um, yeah absolutely fantastic in terms of the meaningful decisions in the game um, Balance wise as well, no complaints whatsoever. If you lose this game, you're gonna to deserve to lose the game because um, everything is in front of you. Uh, there's no kind of hidden information and um, yeah, the best player is going to win. Um, time frame, I think um, you know, the hour and a half is the sweet spot for this one. Um, the turns do go through really quickly and I think you could probably squeeze that time frame down um, if you play this more regularly because each round is ultra quick and you know these 12 rounds do really fly by and in terms of the uptime as well um, absolutely no kind of scope to lose your interest because there's always something going on and you're always going to be thinking and planning ahead. Um, replayability I think is top notch with this one. Um, don't get me wrong it's going to always have that same kind of feel to it but the you know the order of the events are going to come out it's going to change every time um, and you know you're going to have to rack your brains in different ways every time because sometimes you might have a couple of events that are really close together um, which kind of complement each other and you can think okay I'll weather that storm and then get rid of the helpers that, that will help me with that and I can focus on something else whereas sometimes there might be you might have say um, you know, you might need a bunch of food here and a bunch of food all the way over here and that means you're going to have to string along a pretty useless um, food worker for as long as you can um, in order to pay for the food at, at, you know, towards the end of the game. And furthermore, you're trying to keep everyone alive as well because you get points at the end of the game for each worker you have alive still. So yeah, there's, there's loads of things going on. You're trying to do everything and you just can't. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Um, player interaction is, um, you know, it's... It's okay. It's well, it's good. In fact, there's some some um, the tension of the initiative track is top notch because you know you're constantly going to be going back and forth to try and get that first spot, which again is great player interaction. Um, the tiles in order to get their workers that you want are very very um, you know scarce, so you want to get there before the other person can um, because they might get the ones that you want, and there's only going to be the uh, worst version of them left when you really need them. Um, so that's really cool. Um, you know, the old the idea of getting onto places first and then having to pay um, to, to go after them is cool. So yeah, there is uh, enough player interaction here to make it meaningful. Um, aesthetically and the components, they're pretty plain to be honest. The, the production quality is cheap um, and the artwork is, you know, the box and that's okay. But it's very basic, um, nothing special whatsoever. 
But again, it's it's not all about that. It's a um, you know, it's more about the mechanism and the feel of the game, and and that does completely override the artwork and the visual and the kind of um, superficial qualities of a board game. Um, you know, this one does have a lot of heart and soul to it, and it does completely um, override that component aspect of the game. Um, theme wise, um, I do really like it. You know, just all the diff it might be quite depressing. Um, you know, getting bombarded with like you know your plague and your famine and your um, you know all your different kind of tragedies that are going to keep bombarding you um, but it does it does work well and um, I've got no complaints whatsoever and the setup time and teardown time is nothing um, or, or no issue um, very proportionate so yeah overall um, this game is uh, is great I, I really do enjoy this one um, I love how unique it is compared to his other games and in, and in fact compared to any game whatsoever it does have that complete unique space on my gaming shelf that nothing else kind of scratches the itch for um, it's meat, meaty, but you know, it, it, it's not going to be a game that you're always in the mood to play, but when you do play it, you're going to enjoy it and when you're in the right mood for it. Um, you know, if you, if you like to, um, weather the storm and like to strategize, then this is going to be one to check out. Um, if you don't like the kind of punishing feel of games uh, or you know, feel like the game's absolutely, um, you know, hating on you, then this is probably not one to try, but, um, it's, it's just great. I, I do really enjoy it. It gets a very good rate, rating from me, um, and I, and that just misses out on like a, an excellent rating. I think give it more plays and more longevity than I think this could squeeze up to an excellent for me. Um, fantastic game, um, and I look forward to playing it more and more and more. Um, albeit that I'm not going to play it terribly often um, because it is that punishing. So that's in the year of the dragon. Definitely check this one out if you like your Stefan Feld games. But bear in mind that it is quite different. Um, so if you have enjoyed this review, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos too. Uh, you can also support me by following me on Instagram at chairman underscore board or supporting me on Patreon at patreon forward slash chairman of the board. Uh, for everyone else, I'll see you next time on chairman of the board. Bye.